I was gonna let it rest for a couple of times, for a little while and see what happens. Hello. Yeah. Hi, this is Phil with KHIS. Hey, Phil. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm calling in for a Dave Kilmer's call. Yes, me too. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I had the right one there. Yeah. All right. Um, can, can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Hi. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you guys for, for being on the uh, call. Um, I, I'm not sure why it's not showing everybody's screen. See, there's a chat over here. I'll move the chat over. Um, Dave, are, are you on the call? Yeah, I'm here. I, I can't see anyone, but that, that's okay. Yeah. But, uh, but we need Jeff to be able to show people what we're doing. Yeah, hopefully he'll be on here in a minute. Um, I'll just talk for a few seconds and uh, hand it over to you, uh, Dave. Um, I appreciate all you guys being here and uh, appreciate you guys uh, supporting um, what we're doing. Um, I, I really do think um, this is the wave of the future. I mean, you know, I, I know this is preaching to the choir, but, you know, most of us are very heavily dependent on real estate agents like myself. And if we're not getting uh, business from real estate agents, trying to get it through the Internet via S search engine optimization or something like that. Um, the problem is if either one of those two go away or, or get weakened in some way, then that weakens our business. And I think if uh, we can start creating our own leads, either through pre-inspections, or it doesn't have to be pre-inspections. This is a, uh, a, a, a lead capture software, you know, anything you can put out there to get them to, uh, to you know, like a free rate on test or an inspection discount or anything to get them to call in. Uh, it's a way to generate your own leads and not be so dependent on real estate agents. And uh, I've got two signs out this week. I'm uh, pretty, uh, pretty happy about it um, and, and generating some leads. And I know a few others of you are as well. Um, don't be intimidated by it. It's actually pretty easy once you go through it. Uh, you just got to load up a property, put the pictures on, put the uh, report on if you have it, assign it a code, and the uh, person has to approve it. If it's not a pre-inspection, I would just send it to my own email. So that way you wouldn't have to wait for them to approve it. But uh, I think especially when it starts slowing down um, in the fall, um, we're all going to be pretty glad that we, uh, you know, have some other sources of uh, uh, referrals. Dave, I'm going to turn it over to you, and hopefully Jeff will be on here shortly. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying, I don't know, you know, why he's not here yet. But, uh, yeah, you know, just to echo what uh, Preston said, I was in – Denver talking to a bunch of MIC people and you know same kinds of things I mean we're doing what we're doing for a few different reasons one to combat another platform that's coming out that said they're gonna offer free stuff which we thought would be bad for our industry um, and then we know that uh, you know I, I showed everybody at Aardvark we have like hundred and eighty five reviews in, in Fort Wayne and then if you Google home inspectors in Fort Wayne I mean, all these to plays are, are popping up there. Thumbtack, Home Advisor, you know, uh, uh, Blue Home or Home Blue, whatever it is. I mean, all those pay to plays are up there. So all this work that we've done for years and years and years to develop 
you know, a great reputation and name for ourselves. You know, we got pushed down because, you know, other companies are, are paying Google now, right? We don't pay to play like that. And then, you know, there's outside entities coming into uh, the industry and uh, affecting, well, I think they're going to affect, I don't want to fear monger anyone, but I think they're going to affect our referral sources, which are the realtors. Um, I'm not going to say they're going to wipe them out or anything like that, but certainly need to be uh, relevant in the uh in the home searching um, uh, stratosphere because 92% of the people that are looking for houses are doing it online. You know, back in the day, they had to, you know, hire an agent to find a house. It's not that way anymore. So they're searching for houses online and 70% of those people are, you know, doing business with the first person they talk to. So really what we're trying to do, the end game is, is build another home searching, you know, website where home inspectors are attached to every house on that website and every time potential buyer activity is created, you know, the home inspector would know about it. And of course the realtor that's playing ball with the home inspector, you know, would know about it too. So we're definitely, uh, you know, trying to, to, um, to get in that market space, but in the immediate, we know that's going to take a while for us to get there. I mean, we have to get a lot of users and um, we've talked about this before. We don't need, you know, every inspector in every city. So we want our users to have a USP. We want our users to be quality inspectors. We don't necessarily need quantity. We want quality um, guys that are going to represent the industry really well and, and represent the brand, uh, you know, of inspected houses really well. So that's, that's really important to us. Um, but what we really need is, is realtors. We need tons of realtors and we need their inventory, which is the houses. And that's what's going to create the organic searches is getting a bunch of inventory on the, on the, um, you know, on the internet. But, uh, you know, until that happens, you know, why sign up for our program? Well, it's first and foremost a tool for you to use to get the realtors to, to start referring to you. I mean, this is a tool to pick up agents. And, you know, I have my own success stories. And if I tell my own success stories, people are like, oh, you're just trying to sell the product, right? So we need you guys um, to share some success stories. And I know, you know, uh, there's lots of people out there that have some success stories. You know, Chris Haywood put, uh, put some stuff out there that was really good. I mean, Drew Benjamin, um, he went to an office yesterday where they actually promote pre-listing inspections. And they do, it's a smaller office, like eight, eight agents or something like that. And they promote them on all their listings. And they do like 100 and something a month. And he basically picked up that office because he said, hey, look, you know, if you work with me, I'm going to help you get leads off of those, you know. And um, he explained how the program worked and they got pretty excited. And, you know, if he jumps on this call, let him, you know, say uh, some things about that. But, uh, you know, this is a tool for you to do more inspections. If you just pick up one agent, it pays for the $49 a month fee or whatever you're paying, you know. So, um I think that you can pick up, you know, dozens of agents, you know, with this tool. And for me, I'm just telling you the God's honest truth. When I talk to realtors, they get really excited about this. And you can talk to, you know, 10 realtors and not all 10 of them are going to, um, you know, want to jump on board. But if you get two or three to jump on board, that's huge. And I would target um, realtors that use you right now, but I would target realtors that don't use you too. I mean, if you pick up an agent, that's not using you, that's an instant sales increase. So, you know, use this as a tool to pick up agents. And, um, you know, certainly this uh, tool that we uh, created, you know, is useful when it comes to homes and, and you know, uh, trying to get buyers leads off of, you know, real estate properties. But Jeff is gonna show you guys, um, you know, different ways to possibly, you know, use this for marketing tonight. And um, I know we have some people on the call tonight who have never um, uh, seen anything about a property page or, or they don't know a lot about our program. So I'm going to let Jeff, um, is he here yet? Jeff, are you here yet? He is. Let me unmute him. Uh, hold on. Uh, rodeo, you run in here, Preston. Let's go. <laughs> He's there. How you doing, Jeff? Yeah. I'm doing all right. How are you? So, so what, I, what I'd like Jeff to do, you know, so there, like I said, there's a few people that haven't, uh, you know, um, seen much about this. So I'd like Jeff to do is, you know, go through, you know, obviously creating, you know, a property page again. Um, so some of you guys don't even have your demo houses uh, set up, which, you know, 
that's one of the first things you need to do is, is set up your demo houses and go through demos with realtors. But I'm going to have him show you how to do that. And then show him how, show, he can show you how to easily um, attach codes. And then from there, show you how you can easily share it via your social media. And then maybe some other things that you can do uh, with this. And then when he gets done doing that kind of stuff, um, you know, I just kind of want to, you know, get some questions and, and um, talk about maybe different things that, that we're finding out, different ideas that we can, you know, use to, to help with this. And, and um, you know, the only thing I'm going to say before I give it to, to Jeff is you guys got to understand we're all pioneers, right? We're all starting this together and we're all going to learn from it together. And, uh, you know, so we just got to be patient with this and, and work with it and grow it. And, you know, it's a movement that we're creating and God bless all of you guys for being part of this movement. So with that said, Jeff, can you, um, you know, take over and, and start showing people things? Let me, let me add one thing in there while Jeff and Jeff, uh, remember you can go down to the bottom of your thing and share screen and that will uh, share your screen with everybody. Um, if somebody has questions while, uh, you know, uh, maybe an orderly way to do it would be to type it in the, uh, there's a, a Zoom gra uh, group chat, and then maybe after uh, Jeff goes through his thing, we can just go through those. It might be easier. So if you got a question or you think of one, just type it in there, and we'll try to go through them there at the end like uh, David was talking about. All right, Jeff, turn it over to you. Okay, we're, you know, Davis wanted to go through a couple of things. So I know some of you have seen some of this stuff already, so it'll be a, a little bit of review. But we'll also, he, he wanted to touch on just some different ways that we've seen people use marketing uh, in, in how to utilize code systems and things like that. So it's, uh, some of you, it'll be kind of very basic. Some will be, you know, maybe a bit, bit eye-opening, but we'll, uh, we'll show you a couple things. But So the first thing is, again, I'm just going to log in. So those of you who haven't spent any time or have been really busy and just haven't, uh, had a chance to log in. Remember, you just go to inspectedhouses.com. And again, this is all mobile as well, so you can just do this on your phone if you want. Under the inspector uh, program, just hit the login button, and that will take us to the login screen. Okay, so then you're gonna throw in your email address, which is one of my demo accounts, and your password. And that should take you into the dashboard. Okay, so this is just one of my demo accounts that I have. So, okay, so what we wanna do is we're gonna go through, you know, kind of creating a property first, which is kind of the main thing. And then we'll get into marketing codes. And then after that, we'll, we'll show you some different ways that you can you know, leverage codes and properties, et cetera. So. All right. So again, under properties, it's on the left-hand side. Uh, we have two types. We have active and inactive. Active properties are the ones that have been approved by the homeowner in order to uh, market those. Uh, inactive properties are ones that have not yet been approved or you've changed the status. We'll get into that in just a second. But we have two lists, so if you wonder what the difference is, that's it. So I'm going to go into active properties for a second, and I want to add a new one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hit the add button in order to do that. It's right on the top, right next to the search button. Go ahead and do that. And it's going to ask me to do a couple of things. So we can add our pictures over here, and we put our property details on this side. Um, we can get as detailed or as generic as we want. Uh, so we didn't want to make this into uh, a system where we had to spend hours and hours in putting data. It's not an MLS listing. It's, you know, it's whatever you want it to be. But it's, it's really simple to create a property. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just choose a file. And let's say I want to go to uh, just put in some of these uh, builder files we've got. So here's a property. Now you'll notice that in this case, this in is this the size case, of the And I'm going to go ahead and uh, scroll back. If you just hold down the control key and use your real mouse, you can go in and out. So if you want to zoom in a certain area, if we want to just look at a certain part, we can go ahead and do that and crop the image that way. But I'm going to go ahead and do as much of this image as I can. So let's say I want to do about right there. Okay, so there's my spot. Okay, I'm going to save that. And we have our first picture. Okay, and we can do the same thing with other things. I'm going to go ahead and just find some interior photos here. Let's get to Got some pictures in here of interior, so. Same thing. I'm just going to throw a couple in, and I'll, I'll show you why I'm putting more images in here in just a second. But the two shots of this kitchen, and that's fine. Okay. And you can add as many photos as you want. There's no cap on it. Um, you can add too many, I think, you know, from a visual standpoint. But you know, there's no cap as to if you want to put 35 pictures on here, you can. Um, the other thing you can do at this point is if you put a bunch of pictures in and you for some reason don't like the order, uh, it's drag and drop. So you can go ahead and just move these things around however you want. 
That's why we're doing right now. But you can drag those around. And then you're going to go ahead and put the address information on this side. So let's say we want to make this uh, 555. Chris? And I'll just, you have to put in a real address. So let's just put this in Lombard. Well, this is the town I live in, so you know the zip code and everything. Okay. And we choose our property type or residential. And then as far as status is concerned, you'll notice that I, when I'm first creating a property, I don't have the option to make it active. Um, I'm going to make it pending. Because the only way that this can be active is if the homeowner or whoever is the authorized person to, to make this active, I could also be a real estate agent. Uh, if they allow that, we'll go through that in a second. So I'm going to make it pending for right now. If you have a YouTube video or a Vimeo video, you can add that as well. So for those of you that are doing video, we can add that and we'll put a link inside the web page. And then we can add features. So you can add features or not. Uh, if you do that, let's say you want to add uh, the beds and bats count for some reason. So if we don't put beds, you can do that. We just save it and you can create a custom field. So let's say this, this is a huge house. This is actually a five bedroom house. And we can add as many of these as we want. So let's say, save that and so forth. I want to say it's got a great patio. So again, you can get as specific or as generic as you want. You don't have to put anything on here. If you're really just about putting the, the inspection report up there with a couple of pictures, that's fine. But if you really want to get granular that a homeowner wants to do it, you can do it. Uh, down below here is your comments. This is where you're, you're going to have, basically it's the remarks. So if something to say about this property. So let's say the property details. And, but you can write, I think it's about 600 characters is probably where you want to stay around just in case you're keeping track of that. Um, otherwise, it starts to look a little bit long on the page. But this is where you're going to put describe the property the first time. And then the last thing we're going to do when we're first creating this property is we're going to add the report file if you have that. Now, we have had uh, some requests. Originally, we just said, you know, use PDF files. But we've made it, we've opened it up so that, you know, we can use all kinds of file types. I am going to, in this case, just load up just a floor plan, just as an example. And once I do that, um, you'll see the file in the system. And we have to click off that we have, again, in our terms and conditions, removed any sort of sensitive information, seller information that we're not supposed to have in there. And so you're going to have to click the little acceptance box uh, before we do this. Uh, oh, Jeff, David. Jeff, can I ask you a question real quick? Just sure. to, um, some guys uh, were asking if a link can just go in there to the report. Does it have to be a, a actual? I mean, it's got to be a file. Yeah, it's got to huh? be. It's a file. Be a file. Yeah. Okay. But and you then, could put in. But you could put in a uh, just a word doc that has a link in it. Doesn't that was a point? We opened it up. It can be an image. It can be a PDF. It can be a number of things. But it is a file that we're adding at that point. So if they put in a Word document uh, that gets downloaded with a link, yep. then it will go to the report? Yep, you can, put in any, you can put in any file type you want. That was one of the early requests we had because some people did come back and said, hey, I don't want to upload a PDF. I want to put in maybe a Word doc that has some links and you know, like a coupon or something in there. I'm like, that's fine. Um, so we just opened it up to any file type, but it is a file. So okay. you'll have to create some kind of document. For that. All right, and, okay. and then... And then one other uh, thing that I'd like to point out is that this system can be used without doing a pre-listing inspection. Everybody needs to understand that. And if, you know, if you're just helping a realtor promote their regular listing, and if you get leads off of that for her or him, they're going to love you for that. And that's, you know, that's, that's, basically, that's basically one of the things I first talk about when I talk about this program. I don't even talk about pre-listing stuff until down the road. So if you load a property page without a report, the purchase report button go okay. up on the property page. So, okay, go ahead. Okay. So I've loaded that file. Um, Dave's right. It looks a little different if you don't put the property page in the, or the, the report page, but I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, I'm going to hit the next button. And it's going to take me actually back into the listing. And so people get a little bit confused at this point. Um, the reason we do that is we've now created a property page and you now have the choice if you want to add an agent to that. Um, you don't have to. You will have to add a homeowner. So just FYI, you don't have to have an agent, but you do have to have a homeowner. So the first thing I'm going to do is, in this case, I'm going to say I'm going to add an agent. I have two ways of doing that. If it's a brand new relationship and I just said, hey, yeah, I'm going to add you to this, we can hit the add button. 
And if we do that, we fill out the, the name of the agent, your email address, and if you want to put their brokerage in there. Now, that will link them to the property. However, they will not receive real-time leads. You'll know that they're linked to that, but you'll still have to forward lead information. Um, the other way we can do it is if we, we can choose realtors from our lists if we've already been working with them. So you'll see I have a big list of test accounts in here. But you notice I've got pending, 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 but the last two I've got are not showing pending. That means that these realtors have signed up for the program and they are now receiving the leads the same time I am on this property. So just to be specific again, I'm going to choose this realtor right here who's, who's me. But if, if I get a lead off this property, they're going to get it at the same time. Now, if I put a different property in and if they're not attached to it, don't worry, they're not going to get the lead that, from any other property. They have to be linked. But this is what the, the realtors are, are getting as a benefit if they want those leads at the same time you are. Otherwise, if you're selling this program without them signing up for this, then you just have to forward the lead information to them. So I'm going to go ahead and that's how you choose an agent. Um, the other thing you have to do, of course, is you have to have a homeowner or whoever the authorized person to uh, approve this listing or whatever I call it, property. So I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, you just put their email address in. So I'm just going to put uh, my Gmail account. Hey, hey, Jeff, uh, yeah. while you're putting that in, I want to tell everybody, um, okay, so if this is a pre-inspection, before that code can go live, they're going to they're gonna get an email to approve it. Uh, and it, they have to approve it before the property will go active. So you'll send this out, and it's still going to stay inactive until they approve it, which is fine because we don't want – you know, to market something they haven't approved. Um, but if you're going to do what Dave's talking about and it's not a pre-inspection, you're just doing some sort of coupon or something, you're probably going to want to send this email to yourself so that you can approve it. You know, or, your homeowners uh, approve or, or something. Or like the, yeah, or the agent um, can approve right. it to the agent. And I, I uh, worked on some language to change the letter that the seller is getting so it says, uh, dear seller or authorized representative on that letter now. And I changed some language in that. So, because um, right now it's pretty much dedicated towards like, hey, your report's ready, ready to publish. And so we're changing that around. Okay. All right. So there's a couple other things I can do here, but we'll get back to that in a second. I'm going to go ahead and send this. And you'll see that it shows in a second here, it's waiting. Um, that means it's pending. I, this has not been approved yet. The email is going to go out in just a second. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. So once I save it, okay, I'm going to go back to continue to edit. We're going to go ahead and get a couple of emails here in just a second. I don't know if they're going to go through quite that fast, but. It'll, it'll take a second for those to go. But I'll be getting the email here in just a minute as an agent. Yeah, they're starting to come through right now. So, uh, there we go. So the first one I got since I sent both to myself is a property website and report approval request. Okay, so this is what the homeowner gets. And again, Dave just said we are going to update the language here a little bit. But the homeowner's receiving this. It's basically a letter that says, hey, you know, there's been a, you know, the inspector's done this. They put this website together. Um, please review it. So they give them a link to the page. And they can see it. Um, they can go ahead and click the second link, which means that they're okay with it, and they publish the page, which is we'll go live with that in a second. And they can review the homeowner terms and conditions for the program, just so that they know exactly what's going on. The other thing we do is we include, if there is an inspection report, we include that as an attachment so they can review it first and make sure there's nothing in there that they don't want to uh, have published before they you know, click the magic button. Let's say when, did, uh, when did you start doing that? I don't remember seeing that before. Day one. That's when an attachment there. Uh, okay. <laughs> so they've always gotten the attachment. They could see it. And then we're going to go ahead and let's say that they've, they've gone through this. They're okay with all the stuff. And I'm just going to go ahead and click this button right here. And they're going to go ahead and go to a thank you page. This is where we're going to put the porch offerings and things like that to them uh, for some extra benefits that they want to have uh, with some, some different, uh, you know, some more value and whatever other, value adds that we might want to tack on there to make your offering with and, us. And let, let me interject real quick. You yeah. know, any offers that we put there, um, that's for the, the seller to uh, say, hey, I like that offer. They click on it. They fill out the information. They submit it. We don't share anybody's information with anyone. But, hey, if we can come up with value offers from different national companies, 
um, to help the seller offset the cost of the inspection, we're going to do it. It'd be really nice if we could come up with a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks in offers. It'd be a lot easier to sell that pre-listing inspection because you know you're going to say, yeah, you're paying for the pre-listing inspection, but you get all the benefits, and there's a bunch of offers on there that you can accept if you choose to accept it. But, um, you know, we're going to work really hard to get some great offers, but we can't get a lot of great offers from national companies until we get you know, a lot of foot traffic on the site. So we'll get some traction. Okay. So they can go ahead and click through and they'll go to their property page, which is now active. Second. So here's their property page. Got the information. They can go ahead and purchase the inspection report. Here's some photos if they want to go through it. We can also look at, you know, map information, different things like that. So it's a nice basic website. We're not trying to uh, overdo it and make it into a NASCAR like uh, some of the other places. But your information here as an inspector. Um, if it's an agent looking at it, we always want to have them be able to join as a partner for you. If they like the program. But it's going to have your details. You know, this is a test account. Whatever you wrote into your account, your photos, your branding. And they can, of course, do you know directly contact you from the forms, send messages off those pages. Now, one thing I do want to go back into this is I'm going to go ahead and just refresh this page for a second. Now you'll see that this, when you go back into this listing of this property, it shows approved. So you're going to know that this property is going to approve. Uh, the other way you can look on this is you'll see that this little check mark has been checked right here. That means that the homeowners approved it as well. So I'm back in active properties. I can see that here's some basic information about it. Here's the report link. Here's some things I can look at. Um, you'll notice it doesn't have these little things at the end. There's a little email thing and text window here. Um, they're grayed out versus uh, colored. That means that we haven't activated a, a specific marketing campaign uh, to that property. I'll show you that here in just a second as well. I'm go ahead and edit this property. So I'm back in the property and you'll see well, actually, before I do that, let me go back into my emails. Uh, hold on a second. I want to show you this first. This is at the email to the realtor guys. So you've been associated with the property. So that realtor will get an, a notice every time. So this is whether or not they are signed up for the program or not. They're always going to get the same notice. If they're already signed up, they don't have to do anything. But it shows them that you've associated them with a property. So they know that you're out there marketing and, and you know, doing things to their benefit. Because obviously the most important part of this, in my opinion, is leads for inspections to home inspectors, right? We're trying to generate more home inspections. And so if those realtor sees that you're out, really out there busting it and you know, trying to promote their listings for them, um, obviously they're more apt to use you in the future for you know, the actual sales inspection, more pre-inspections, et cetera. But we wanna make sure that they see all this stuff and they do have the option if they have not yet signed up to go ahead and click. And if they do that, they will go to a checkout page, which will then associate them automatically with you. So when you go back into your listing the next time around, they will not show as pending. They'll be like one of these realtors here and they'll get the lead right away. Okay. All right. So the other piece of the, the property page is this marketing drip system. Now this is specific to the property. So that means if somebody texts and we'll get into that in just a second or emails or fills out a form, um, they're going to go ahead and get the message specific to this. Uh, beginning next week, we're going to launch, uh, we have a major update coming, which we'll, we'll go through, which is the, the marketing systems that are attached at the, at the contact level and at the marketing code level so that we can do different kinds of drips, different stages. There'll be a one to four step email marketing or text marketing. But for this system right now, we're just going to focus on the initial one step drip or automatic response to a specific property. So you have two things that were going on here. There's email and text. So email comes when they go ahead and fill out these forms. Let me go into property detail here for a second. Ads in the property. So if they fill out that property form I showed you, um, that you would, you know, in response, you, they would get this drip versus the, the text, which comes from the automatic responders. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the email drip just so you can see what this is click the activate button and it's going to ask you to set up a message. Okay. Now we can set up, we want to send the same message out over and over and we don't want to, you know, create custom messages for each property. Um, we can create a template, which means that we can use it over and over again. Right now I, I have a couple of test templates here, but I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you how to create a template. So let's call this one email template one just for right now. And 
let's say that we want to send this particular email out uh, one minute after somebody sent, you know, fills out a form. Okay. Uh, now all I have to do is it's going to say, okay, well, by default, the template is going to show my branding at the top. It's going to have a picture if I want to choose the picture, and then the text I'm going to put in here. And here's uh, a way to edit the email content. So by default, contact name is you know whatever the name is off the form. And we're going to go ahead and write something. So let's just say this is a testing system. Okay, and we're going to upload a photo. Let's put that photo in there for right now. Okay. okay. And we can go ahead and save. Okay. Oh, I forgot to put a subject in. Okay. There we go. So we save that. We continue to edit. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a preview to myself. And that'll take just a second. But now anyone who fills out a form off of a property, go back to this property. If I go down here and fill this out, it's going to get that email. So we can set it for a day, whatever, but it's really specific to that. Text system is exactly the same. So if we want to go back in here and make a text strip, you see now I've got the red color here, which means it's activated. Text is the same. Let's say that if somebody sends a text message to a code associated with this property, say we want to do this two minutes afterwards. Your contact name, you know, thanks for your interest. Or 20% you know, off. or whatever you want to put in the text. All right, so now I have both email and text marketing associated with this specific property. Okay, so how does anybody actually get those messages? Well, that's where the marketing system is coming. So I'm going to go ahead and go in now into the marketing codes. And this is where we're going to kind of talk about properties and we're going to talk about some other things we can do as well. So marketing codes are, it's just a name for campaigns. Um, for those of you who are kind of familiar with marketing, it's just, you know, these are campaign IDs we're going to talk about. But um, the way that we've designed the systems to make it super simple is we want to create marketing campaigns, but whatever we name that is going to become a text code that's associated with the phone number we've given to your account. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and dig into marketing codes. Again, we have an active versus inactive which is the same thing if we're, gonna, we're using it or we're not using it. So if we don't, you know, if we want to take something off the market for a while, we got a sign or something that's inactive, we can move that. But here's all my active codes. And this is the phone number they're associated with. Uh, and this is what they're linked to, how many leads I've got, et cetera, and what they've been used for. So we have a little bit in our dashboard. For that. If I want to create a new code, all I have to do is hit the add button. And remember, we, we're using this against a phone number. So we have to have a unique name. Let's say that we want to call this um, testing 222 or something like that. The system's going to say, oh, okay, you haven't used testing 222. However, if I put just testing, or just test, you'll notice that this code's already in use. It's going to tell me that I can't make that again. Okay? Let's see if I've got test five. Code's already in use, test five. So test five is free. So I can create this code. I decide what I'm going to use this for. So let's say you want to use a yard sign. You can do you put it on flyers. There's a number of different marketing activities that we can show you how to how to leverage marketing codes. In. Or let's say that this in this case we're going to go ahead and send a postcard out, and we want to say hey just you know just pre-inspect it. What? So, okay. And so and I have two choices on what I want to do. I can link it to a property page that I've created within our system. Or I can link that to any website in the world. Let's say that you want to do a promotion for your own website or you're giving out a coupon or something like that. We can link that. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But here's a, let's go ahead and we're going to link it to a property page. And when I click that, it's going to give me a drop down and I choose which property I want to link it to. The last one I just created was right here. So that's the most recent. So now I have this code linked to this property. And I'll show you how this looks in just a second. And then the last thing we have to do is decide what we want to do with 
the phone number itself. Because remember, we're, this is a phone number, so we can do we can text and call. So there is a, a, an automatic voice system with it, and there's a number of different activities that, uh, that we, can, we can do depending on what your preference is. So by default, what happens, if somebody calls this, and they get the IVR, it answers the phone for them, and they put in this code, test five, it's just going to forward to your profile. Number. So it'll dial through, so it bridges the call. You can have it do that. You can have it call somebody else's number. So let's say you have a realtor's going to answer the phone or something, and you want to put in their number, 555, 212, et cetera. You can also record a message. This is just like your, your cell phone voicemail. You can have the system actually call you, and you can record a message. So a lot of people use this for hotline numbers. Uh, this is probably the best utilization of the system. It's recorded information that people want especially if they're calling off the sign. They don't really want to talk to a person in most cases. And the last thing we can do is we can have the system just read your notes, or you can type whatever you want. So there's a robotic voice that will read the text. So if you don't feel like doing any of that stuff and you just want to type the paragraph, you can have the system read it. So just for this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and put back to the profile number. And on your right-hand side, you can see exactly what this code is doing now. So if they oh. scan the code, this is the link they're going to get to. Okay, this is the preview link they're going to get. If they text, this is the message that's going to appear in their text message. And if they call, this is going to go ahead and forward to this phone number. So you always know exactly what a code is being multiplied. So, Jeff, I just have to clarify one thing. Yep. Guys, mute your, um, mute your stuff if, uh, if you're not muted, please. I want to clarify one thing. When it says forward uh, call to profile number, so that means if someone dials in, you know, to the profile number, which, you know, in my case, it's my cell number. Okay. Well, if, they, if they dial this oh. number. Right. Right. That's so that's, that's on your, your market. Okay. Right. They then they get, see the postcard and there's a code on there that says, you know, this, you know, this, for more information about this property, you know, type in test five. So they'll go and they'll hear the message. They'll, they'll key in test five. And in this case, at that point, the system will say, okay, all I need to do is forward this call and it will bridge the call. Right. You can do that. That's by default. So guys, right. So you can, so guys can, you know, forward it to their office numbers or whatever. My question is this, if they text it in and they put on there to forward to say their office number, then the text is going to go to a landline and it won't work. Is that correct or no? Explain the that. Text? If, well, they, this, they, the phone would be, the phone would be fine. Right. But, but you can't send a text message to a landline. I understand that, but if you, my question is, if you've put forward to your office number, okay, and if someone calls, they're going to go to your office number. That's great. But yep. what, if, what if they text it? Does it still go to your profile number? Do all texts automatically go to your profile number? We no matter force what? all texts to go to cell phone numbers. Okay, awesome. All right. Okay. Okay. So the other piece, again, again, same drill. You can go ahead and put that phone number, like I said. Um, this is the one I suggest using. Um, if you call this, it would ring my cell phone. But most people in these, this type of marketing want to hear a recorded message. So if you use this, it will just, I mean, I, it's a little hard to demonstrate here, but you can hear it. But we can go ahead and record. If we do that, you can preview your messages, et cetera. But it's literally just like setting up a, a voicemail report yourself. So anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and go back in here. I'm going to submit this code. Okay, and now we have a marketing code, okay? And with that, we have a QR code if you want to use that, if you want to put it on there. We have a code that goes, that we can you know, text to our phone number. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like here in just a second, so we don't want to send it on a postcard. But I should have a Google Voice line right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and send a message. And again, my phone number for this one, 773, et cetera. So let's say I'm standing out, let's say it's a yard sign, you know, something like, Something like this. Let's say that the phone number, you're standing outside this thing and you got a big number and it happens to this is the right phone number, you text that code. Okay. So I'm going to go back in here, throw this in, and it was test five, right? So this is Google Voice in case you guys are wondering what this is right here, just to demonstrate. So I send the code off. And it's going to go ahead, and I just got a lead notification. But here's the, what the customer is receiving. So they get a link to this property. 
and get my contact information as inspector and my phone number. That's the first thing that they get. Okay? And we'll see some other things happen here in just a second. But I have already opted out. I have, I've already used this line, so you'll notice that the other thing that they're going to get is they're going to get an opt-out notification. I'm not getting that right now. But they will get an opt-out the first time. Uh, just the FTC requires that, so you'll get a chance to say it. If you don't want to talk to me, you don't have to. But um, we only send that one time. Okay. So we got this first link, and then I'm going to go back into the system for just a second. I'm going to go into contacts. And you'll see that here it is, unknown caller, because it's Google Voice. It's not going to land. Test 5. You can drill into this customer. We can go ahead and if we know anything about them, we can check them against the sex offender registry or criminal background checks, etc. Um, it's not going to know much about uh, this this person because it's a again it's a Google Voice number with no information. But this person has texted it a few times. So here they they've looked at this property, they've looked at this Michigan Avenue property, they've also looked at the Roosevelt property. So we get a little bit of a history on it. We can add notes. We can go ahead and update information. So let's say that I want to put this as, I find out this is the customer's email address. Whatever we want to do, we can change our status to a prospect, et cetera. I'm going to save this. Okay, I'm going to continue to edit. And you'll notice now, once I put in, I got a little bit more information, especially the email address. You can see I started to pull some additional information. So this is the data augmentation part that they may have talked about. But in this case, based on this email address, I was able to pull the Facebook account, Twitter account, LinkedIn, and Google+. Plus. I also know a little bit about their interests. I know the gender. I know the occupation and the company that they work uh, in this case. So it's a hit or miss. I mean, the, these, are, these are national data sets we pull from public data. But we do have some pretty good matches uh, if we can get email addresses. So what, what everybody needs to understand is – Someone texts in, a lot of times we get their name. Sometimes it's not always 100% accurate, but we get their name. The number is always 100% accurate. And sometimes we get their addresses, you know, and it's amazing. We get how old they are sometimes, just off of a text. And if they fill out a form on our uh, property page, it goes to the realtor and to the home inspector. But if we collect their email address, then we're able to connect to their social media. Sometimes to pull up a picture of that potential buyer and then um you know from there you know we learn even more stuff like jeff showed you and uh and the realtors are really going to love that you know sometimes they can being able to see a picture of who they're going to meet for the first time is important being able to run a sex offender report or a criminal background check easily you know it's important for marketing purposes and safety purposes to easily click on someone's social media page i mean that's what they're paying the 49 bucks a month for guys they're paying their 49 bucks a month for that kind of stuff. And um, again, if, if they don't want to uh, join, you can get the leads and then you could forward the leads to them. That's, that's fine, but they're not getting them in real time. So it's not as, as strong of a benefit for them and they don't get to use all these other features. And um, so anyway, I mean, when I go out and promote this, I'm like, Hey, you can get free leads off this program. That's how it works. When they come in from, my sign, text off my sign or, or off a property page, I'll give them to you. But honestly, you should sign up so you get to have all these other benefits and you get the leads in real time. So, all right, go ahead, Jeff. No problem. So, I mean, that's, that's a basic flow and how, how things happen. But I know that Dave wanted to touch on some things. I know we've been on the phone for about 40 minutes now. But, you know, some of the conversations have come up in the past. It's like, well, you know, we do different types of marketing. And, you know, yes, I see the connection with the real estate agent, et cetera, but you know, how do we do some direct consumer marketing or what if I want to use it to promote my own website or you know, send out some coupons or do some cold marketing? And the answer is we can do all of the above. Um, the system is designed to work with all types of digital marketing and even print marketing you know, if, you, if you're using print. And we'll just kind of give you some, some ideas and examples of how people kind of use these study things in the past. And so I'm going to go back into marketing codes for just a second. And, uh, We'll show you kind of some, some ideas here. So you'll notice that, again, when we're looking at codes, some of these are linked to properties and some are linked to arbitrary URLs. Okay. So one of the things that people have done in the past um, that has been somewhat effective, and this is mainly talking about the real estate side, but I'll give you an example, is, is postcard marketing. Okay. And so you know, if you're looking to go ahead and you know, get in front of a consumer, you know, nothing sells better than direct response. Um, 
offer acceptance, offer acceptance. And so what we're trying to do is track, right? We want to know what's working and what's not. So we can go ahead and put, you know, codes and things. We're not giving anything away. For instance, if you want 20% off your inspection, you've got to, you know, text inspect to my number. And those seem to work better than just call me. That's nobody wants to call, right? So that's, you know, one thing that we've seen people do. So now um, let's, okay. before we move on, let's talk sure. about that, guys. Okay. So you send out a postcard, someone texts in. All right, that's great. And, and then, you know, Jeff's going to show you how you can have them. If they text in, go to your you know website. But what's great about our system is when that text comes in, then you can send out an automatic drip text to them. So it's not just a matter with our system of getting the leads. It's being able to automatically market back to them. And, and with the next release, there's going to be a series of different, you know, drip campaigns that can be sent out to people. So, um, so that's important um, to understand that this is not just about getting leads. Um, it's about being able to market to those leads automatically when, after they come in too. Right. And, and again, if we'll do another webinar next week after the release, but uh, there'll be a four step system that we can do directly off contacts. So I'll, we'll go through that. But anyway, this is just one thing that we've done. Um, signage is always the obvious one that you've seen that before, but we've also seen people put these out, for instance, if they're doing local uh, sponsorship signage, like for instance, if you got a uh, little league baseball team or something, and there's a sign on the, on the, the outfield fence, you know, text here for information. We've seen realtors do that, uh, especially if they're marketing subdivisions or new construction areas. It's like, hey, you know, text for model information or, you know, for the value of your property in this area, you know, text, you know, value or something like that. And people will tend to do that um, as opposed to call. You know, they're just looking for something back. But when you do that again, every time you're looking at their information coming into your, your contacts and you can go from there. Now, for instance, like, you know, there's a lot of unknown callers and things that come in up this code. But the one thing you can do, obviously, is if they text you, you can text back. Um, we're not texting through the system. Um, we have had built systems in the past where we were texting directly back, and we found that it's actually, uh, you get better response when you text from a different number, <laughs> believe it or not, because they're almost waiting for the text back from this one. So we did not put a, a, a text feature directly on here. Um, it's possible we may do that, but you know, we found better results if you're using your own cell phone. So anyway, so the one thing I want to show you here is, again, we'll go back to marketing codes. And let's talk about arbitrary URLs for just a second, because this is where the system gets very flexible in terms of what you're doing. So a couple of different things. So this is, sorry, just, sorry. let me go ahead and edit this one. Okay. So before, remember when we did this drop down right here, we just had this as a sign. We had the choice of whether we want to do a property or arbitrary URL. And again, arbitrary URL is just a website. Okay. So let's say that we want to do, Okay, that's just a domain that I have. Okay, I can link that to anything I want. So let's say this is your inspection site and you set up a coupon page that has the inspection, a discount, right? So if we go back to our postcard and we say, hey, text this information, inspect, we may want to take them to this specific landing page that has the coupon offer. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, okay, they, they still may have to fill something out on your website, but they gave them the link. Not only do we capture them here, but you may get them again. So you're going to know kind of people who are kind of wishy-washy, who you may want to have to remarket you, and resolicit, versus people that are hot to trot and actually go out and fill the information in the forms, right? So if you're, if you're not familiar with landing pages and things, we may do a, a class on that. Um, it's not hard. I can show you how to also how to do, we'll do some digital email marketing and things like that if you're not familiar with how to use like MailChimp or some other programs out there for email marketing. But really simple. Put this together. And then again, if you, you know, same thing with the voice, but we can go ahead now and have any website that we want to set up or even a realtor's page. So, you know, if you're working in, in collaboration on a, a listing or something, or you've done the pre-inspection and then the listing actually came on the market and you want to go ahead and have that code or that sign you've already got there, but actually go to the MLS driven listing page, you can simply put in whatever address you want. But you'll still get those leads if the, the realtor signed up, they'll get them simultaneously, or if they're not, you can forward them. But we can use this very effectively um, in terms of really any kind of point of interest marketing. Okay? The other thing that you can do with the code system, and again, these are campaigns, is we can also push these to social accounts. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
let's do one that's actually a property for a second. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, I can do Facebook and Twitter right now. Um, we'll work on some other ones as we go forward, Instagram and some others. But let's, Facebook is mainly the big one and, and Twitter. So I'm going to go ahead, excuse me, hit the Facebook button right there. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. And if you're already logged into your system, it's going to ask you what you want to do with this. So this is my demonstration Facebook account, Joe Beta Tester. But I have well, a couple of choices. Okay, go ahead. Jeff, before you, before you go on, now guys, this, this uh, profile, this Facebook profile and your Twitter profile, all that, that's in your, uh, when you set up uh, your profile in the system, you're putting that URL there. So it's going to take, when you click that Facebook button, it's taking you to your you know, URL of your profile. Correct, Jeff? Yes, it is. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose what we want to do. So it's going to bring this up. If you're not logged into Facebook at the time, you, you have to put your credentials in and log in. I'm already logged in. That's why it's uh, pulling this up. Um, but here's the property. Uh, I can go ahead and say whatever I want about this. So I can, I can put a description in. So testing here. And then I can choose actually what I want to do with this. So I can post it to my timeline. I can share it to a friend's timeline, believe it or not. Uh, a group. So if we want to put it on, you know, inspected houses, uh, you know, gain culture real estate event page, I can do that. Um, I can also share it with a business page. And this, this is important because if you, you want to put it on a business page, like for instance, if I wanted to put it on a home with two, three realty or one of these other ones that we were working on, um, that will give you the ability to boost the listing. Um, you, if you put it on a regular page, like your own timeline, uh, if you're looking to really promote something, um, you can't boost from a personal account, but you can boost from business accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that means. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just share this to my regular timeline just so you can see it. So I'm put that through. Okay. And then we'll go over to Facebook for just a second. Let's see here. Okay. And here is testing here, right? So here it is. Here's the main image from the property we had. And the text I put in, and if I click on this link, it's going to take me back to the landing page. Okay, so you can go ahead and promote that to your Facebook circles pretty quick. Now, the other thing we could do is if, if I was if I promoted this to my business page, and I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this, if you really wanted to put something out, and again, you can do this with arbitrary URLs, it doesn't have to just be our property page. And we do have the ability, I'm going to go here for a second, to do this boost event. Now, again, this is a business page. I happen to be on the board for this uh, not-for-profit called Neighbor. But uh, if you hit the Boost Event tab, which you'll see on your business account, it's going to ask you what you want to do. You can actually have put some advertising dollars behind it. And you can do whatever you want to do. It's going to ask you what your objectives are, et cetera. Uh, you can put video in. You can do whatever you want. But the nice part about this Knowledge. Hold on. This is just so I don't put anything past you. Okay, so we can go ahead and put in money, how much we want to spend, U.S. dollars, etc. My budget, let's say my budget's thirty dollars a day. But the other nice part about it is that we can choose a demographic, right? People who we can create an entirely new audience. So if you're looking for something really specific, we can choose gender, we can choose age ranges, we can choose really specific locations. This shows Illinois. But we can go all the way down to sub zip codes. I mean, it's Facebook has really got this part down. Um, some of the other things, you know, like about Facebook, like a lot of times you'll get a lot of engagements and a lot of likes, but you don't get a lot of action about it. But they do make it so you can start to really target people that you are you think are interested in your product, right? And they also you can put in things that, that they're interested in, like oh, I'm a homeowner. So you can try and really narrow that down. So Facebook boosting is. Uh, it does help. You have to do it right. Uh, make sure you're you're targeting the right people when you do it, or else you're going to throw a bunch of money away. Now, 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 here's one of the things you guys can do. I mean, don't just think marketing, you know, to to buyers, or sellers. Think about marketing to those realtors, and you could create like a, a postcard or something um, with the text code on it. You know, talking about how you can help them get leads, up their listings, all kinds of stuff. And then, um, you know, hey, take this demo and we'll show you how it works kind of thing. And um, you could do a Facebook post to just realtors and, and try and pick up realtors that way. So anyway, so that, that's Facebook. Um, Twitter's but the same way. There's no boosting on Twitter that we have. It's just posted your, post, your account. 
But uh, I, I clicked back on here just to show you FYI. This was uh, the text drip, by the way, that came through. You said, you know, thanks for your interest, et cetera, 20% off special. So that came through about two minutes after I received the initial text. So that's, that's how that messaging works as well. All right. Um, as far as other types of marketing are concerned, I think we could do it on a one-off basis. I mean, traditionally, like I say, any kind of print, you're doing flyers, signage, anything like that, we can show you codes. You can also use QR codes on those. Um, popular in certain areas, mainly on the West Coast, um, very popular in Asia. But um, the, the only thing about QR codes, just so you guys know, is that the FCC does not consider a QR code as an opt-in to marketing. So if you're texting or somebody calls you, uh, that's an opt-in. Means that you can call that person for 18 months unless they specifically say don't do it, right? So they're, they're on your sales list. If they scan a QR code and go to your website, the FCC does not call that a lead to you. So they would have to fill out a form or do something else. But you can use QR codes. Um, just depends on the type of marketing. There's sometimes appropriate, sometimes uh, sometimes not. Uh, as far as, again, different types of arbitrary URL marketing, you know, I think in another class we'll get into you know, email marketing. And one thing we can also do with email marketing is you can take the bit.ly links, which are here, right? These are our shortened URLs. And we can embed those into social posts and we can also embed those into email. And the reason you want to do that, let's say, hey, you want to check out this property, is that when we're using these links, they take us to properties, we can actually start to view what are called sessions, okay? So the sessions, and I'm not showing it here because I'm not going the pages, but the sessions are how many times a page was visited. So you can actually drill into the fact that somebody actually used that code. And we can go down here into our code, code and see you know, how many views, how many links, and how many leads have actually come off of each one. So you can really track the activity really down to the post level in terms of your marketing if you're really trying to get you know, a sense of the ROI. Because you know, I've known that, you know, especially with print, it's uh, more billboards and things like that. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell. You know, you're mainly getting branding, but uh, we, you know, we're trying to find different ways that we can actually get a really specific number of you know, what's been happening. So anyway, all right, Dave. Well, I mean, it's uh, it's almost eight o'clock, so I don't want to go too much farther. I know people have uh, things to do, but uh, we can stop there. And like I say, next week we can schedule the next session, which would be on uh, multiple drip systems, and we can get a little bit of the email marketing. Right. Um, let's just answer a couple quick questions and then. You know, we can wrap it up. Um, someone said, how do you change a realtor's number in the system? I don't think we can do that. Can we? They have partners. To they said, how do you change a realtor's phone number in the system? Okay. Um, right now, we're not collecting their phone number. Is it a realtor who's signed up and yeah, is, is receiving leads? Is that? Is that is yeah, they would have to do that themselves, correct? Yeah, they would have. A, there's a profile. But they could they could change their phone. All right. Um, Where is that at? Uh, it should be in the upper right hand corner. Uh, if they're having trouble with that, um, we can change it for them. And um, you know, people ask, can codes be reused? Obviously. Oh yeah, that's the whole point of them, and that's why we have active or inactive. That's an easy one. So let's say that uh, right now, I have uh, this code test five, and I let's say I've created some permanent signage. Right, I have like an actual sign that I want to move. You know, spent the money, got the aluminum sign, and put it out there. Um, it's this simple. So if you go ahead and open it up, sorry. And say we want to move this sign to another house, you just go ahead and click on the drop down, change the property, and say that's it. All done. So we can use these codes as much as we want. And we can change them to whatever we want. We can change them to properties, to arbitrary URLs, back and forth. It doesn't matter. So they're completely. Right. And um, you, you, uh, how do you know when a realtor signed up? You kind of went over that already. In, in your partners tab, it shows all the realtors. Yep. And, um, and the ones that so, have actually signed up. Um, see these little green check marks here? So it, it's a great question mark if they have not signed up officially. And a green check mark if they are actually live so you can tell if they've actually signed up for it. and the the realtors dashboard um, we that's something that we had talked about uh, we're asking when that might be ready um, and if it's not ready soon can we do a tutorial 
support the realtors. So when they, I mean, that's something we should probably uh, do if it's not uh, if the new dashboard. Yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, the new the new screens look very much like this. It's just you know everything in, in there's an order of events, right? So I, obviously we've been trying to put our time more on the specter side. But that's right. You know, obviously our first priority. And you know the realtors are getting leads, right? And and what we found is realtors typically you know, they get the leads. They have different CRMs. They use our tools and so forth, but it's, you know, it's not, they're in the MLS, right? And they just want the lead. Most of the time, they're just looking on the phone, et cetera. So they're, they're to me, uh, if that, that is not the huge priority. As long as they get those leads, they're not really getting it. Um, but we will, we will go ahead and do a tutorial on that. And we, are, we do have back-end design changes for them as well. It's just that there's other things on the front end for the inspectors that we found to be more of a priority. All right, couple, just a couple more real quick. Yep. Share it to LinkedIn. Uh, we have not put an integration into LinkedIn yet, but that is on the docket. So we have to, LinkedIn is a pain in the butt, by the way. LinkedIn is very difficult to work with in terms of syndication. And so, uh, go ahead. Well, that's fine. Um, yeah, so the answer is no to LinkedIn right now. <laughs> no, but, it's not, not now. Uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is not trivial in terms of trying to auto post. They, they do not like that very much. So, okay. so we've been, you know, we, there is plans to try and get approved. Well, but it's someone not. could take the bit.ly link and just post it there themselves. Couldn't they? Oh, for sure. That, that was the whole point. So if you're, if you want to, you know, post something on it, go to your active marketing codes. I'm just going to go ahead and open one up and your referral links are right here. You can go ahead and copy that, et cetera. Or if you just want to put the whole link in, you can just grab this. Um, this is a tracking link, so we can see sessions. This is the actual property. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to use the marketing code to get to where we want to trace this to, um, use this link. If you just want to see the property, you can use this link. I would use the marketing one. I mean, that way you know if people are actually seeing it. Or, well, or... right, and that, and then, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, you can see otherwise it would be in the sessions, but yes. Well, I prefer to use this because then you can go down here and look at your codes and say, oh, okay, here we go. So this, this is giving me three leads. Right. Uh, a couple other things, and we got to go. Um, yep. Does it integrate with ISN? No. Um, we're, we're actually not collecting customer data on our platform. Um, the only thing we get is their email, guys. We don't want, you know, your customer's data. We don't want to ever be accused of sharing your customer's data. I mean, the only thing we have is the email because they have to authorize you know, the platform, you know, uh, or the property to go live. Yeah, for so. the homeowners, yeah. We, we decided that the only thing we, we need you to do is have the email address that we send to them. And if they want to provide their their information to third parties with their business, but we don't want to collect that. Um, right. Because we don't want, especially inspectors, to say, hey, you're taking my customers. Absolutely not. We are not trying to take any customer data at all. Right. Sharing on social media best impact versus yard signs. Well, yeah, 92% of people are searching for houses on social media. That's why we're trying to, you know, for our industry, create a, a, another home searching website for the general public to look at and accept that us, the home inspector attached to that property and the realtor attached to that property, get that lead for free. You know, all they gotta do is be a member of the platform. So um, yeah, that's, you know, you're exactly right. Um, Yard signs, you know, are going to help a little bit, um, but know that the most of the organic searches are going to come once we get a ton of inventory on the site. It's going to be huge for our industry if we can, you know, get this thing big. A um, couple other ones. 60-day free trial for realtors. All right. Um, okay, so let's send let's how to invite a partner. Okay, so let's yep. go through that really quick because I've actually got to jump. But, okay, so let's say that we, we have these partners, but we want to add one. Um, there is an invite button right here at the top. You click on that, and what you're going to do is it's going to prompt a, an email screen here. Okay, it's actually trying to pull up Outlook in my case. Let's make sure it's Second here. That's the pain when you have Outlook loaded, but uh, whatever. Okay, so I've pulled this up. So it prompts an email message. Okay, you're going to want to update this email message. Okay, so you're going to put the email of the realtor here. And you're going to want to change this subject because it's, it's invite partner. Obviously, you know, hey, you know, John Doe, whatever it is, you know, I got, here's an invite from me, et cetera. And then 
excuse me, you know, you, you can you can change this message however you want. Don't change this link. That's the only thing you don't want to do. This is your actual inspector invite link. So if they click on this, which I'll just copy this for a second. I can click, click on it. I don't have to change the page. So if they open that up, it's going to take them to a checkout page. Okay. Now this checkout page is specific to you, and you'll see that this is, now mine is special because I'm, I'm sitting at home and when I do test accounts, I charge myself a penny. But you notice it is the realtor with 60 day trial. They are not charged any amount of money for 60 days, okay? And it does send them a notice that if they decide not to do it, they can cancel before it actually does charge them. But we'll go ahead and sign them up. This is standard now for all real estate agents. We give them 60 days. And the idea is to try and get them hooked. You know, obviously get, get a pre-inspection and get them a leader to you so they, they feel they get value. But more importantly, we want to get lots of realtors signed up so they start to send you leads, whether they're pre-inspection leads or whether they just say, hey, you know, you're the guy who came in and did that presentation and signed me up. Yeah, hey, I got a, I got a buyer. You know, I want to go ahead and uh, you know, get a house inspected. That, this is the kind of stuff we want, right? This is really about networking and building. Because the value of the platform is in the leads to you. So anyway, so that's what happens. If they do spill this out, what will end up happening is they will show up in your system and there'll be a little green check like this and away you go, okay? But that's how easy it is to link them. And again, yes, there's a 60 day trial to all realtors at this point. Okay, well, Jeff, I appreciate your time. Um, I, I know you have to leave and we'll talk to these guys. They have a couple more questions, marketing okay. things. And then we'll wrap it up ourselves. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, and, I appreciate um, it. No next update thanks, comes out. We'll have another. We'll have another Zoom meeting. Okay. okay so good. thanks. A couple questions, real quick, and then um, and then we can wrap it up, guys. So yes, they do have to enter their credit card for the sixty day free trial. Now, again, what Jeff said is we don't charge their card. On like day fifty seven or fifty five or whatever it is. They'll get an automatic email from the system saying, hey, you know, we're going to charge your card next month. And if you want to opt out, you know, click here. Now, hopefully you guys uh, will get them a lead or two and, and they'll pick up a customer and they won't want to opt out. Right. Um, one of the things that we had talked about was making it longer than 60 days. And there's some home inspectors that I was surprised. They're like, no because I don't want to devalue the product to them. If we make it six months or a year, then, you know, uh, it will devalue the product. So, you know, we had thought about, you know, making it longer and, and we'll talk about that. If 60 days doesn't seem to work or, you know, um, it, it, if a bunch of realtors are signing up for 60 days and then they cancel out because, you know, the leads aren't coming in for whatever reason, then, then we'll go to a longer trial period, I think. Um, but what you guys need to understand on this realtor stuff is, you know, our marketing strategy was really simple. Hey, let's sign up some great inspectors. Let's not sign up a ton of inspectors. Let's sign up quality, not quantity. And then those quality inspectors will go in their marketplaces and basically sign up, you know, realtors. And that's how we'll pay our bills, you know, pay for the technology and the upgrades and all that kind of stuff. Well, you guys aren't getting that done. Uh, as a whole, as a group. And I know it's busy uh, time of the year for us and, you know, we're implementing something new and we're all learning and all that. But I'm telling you right now, we, you know, we, Preston and I have, you know, bills to pay. So we're going to be a lot more aggressive on, on trying to sign up more inspectors. And, um, you know, again, we're going to try and, you know, uh, be respectful of the FM areas and, 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 uh, you know, communicate with the FMs uh, about that. And then we're going to try and not sign up, you know, uh, a ton of uh, inspectors per market. I'd like to have it at like 10% of inspectors per market. And that's it. It's more about getting the realtors than it is the inspectors. So just keep that in mind. So if you're in a market and you're signing up a bunch of realtors, you know, that's less of a reason for Preston and I to focus on signing up more inspectors in that market. So just, you know, look at it that way. Hey, if I'm signing up in a bunch of realtors, then I don't have to worry about a bunch of inspectors, you know, uh, getting, um, you know, taking this USP away from me. A um, couple other uh, uh, things I think that uh, guys were asking about. Um, they're asking about uh, marketing materials, resources, you know, things like that. You, you know, listen, guys, we're all pioneers in this together. And, and um, you know, we're all throwing out different ideas, different marketing pieces that we develop, things like that. 
Um, this is a tool to use however you want, get creative with it how you want, but we are also trying to create a community where we're sharing things with each other. And I know for a fact, like Kayla Troutman, she made a PowerPoint, she shared it, and then Christopher Haywood used it, and you know, I think it was successful for him. So there is a resource page that was started and uh, managed uh, by Ryan Howell. So anyone that signs up to be a member of this platform, there are some things there. And uh, Press and I know that we need to add more stuff to it, add more videos, all of that kind of uh, um, you know, uh, resources to help everyone. We know that, but you know, we're spread really thin right now. So as much as you guys can help um, and, and do some things, uh, that would be great. Uh, Preston, do you have anything else? Um, just two things. Uh, I'll get this uh, recorded in, you know, on the, uh, the uh, Facebook page tomorrow for anybody who wants to look at it again, especially the stuff that Jeff did. I mean, I even learned a couple of things and I thought I had known that. Um, the other thing is uh, low hanging fruit. Um, you know, what Jeff was saying, attaching to an arbitrary URL, which is basically you know, create a page on your website for a home inspection discount and create some signs for uh, more information on the property home inspection discount and go to any realtor. And man, I tell you, a realtor you're friendly with will do that in a second because you're helping them market it. Uh, they can see some leads without having to do the pre-inspection. Uh, that's a really low hanging fruit. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I did two pre-inspections this week, um, but I'm going to try to go after uh, some low hanging fruit or make that web page and, you know, home inspection discount. But anyway, I will get this uh, recording online tomorrow uh, for everybody who didn't see it and for everybody who wants to see it again. Well, and then I would like to call on Drew Benjamin real quick. I was with Drew um, uh, yesterday in Denver and uh, he bought me a bunch of beers. So I appreciate that, Drew. Um, but if you could tell him the one story that you had or whatever story you want to tell him, if you could share that, that is a huge success story. Um, and if you could make a video uh, sharing that story, I mean, I'm sure that would help us, you know, create a bunch of uh, excitement. So go ahead, share that story. Yeah, I mean, what, um, so before I went up to Denver, when I was talking to Preston Dave to do the uh, MIC um, testimonial thing and talk about the inspected houses, I actually had a CE event scheduled with uh, the local, one of the local top REMAX teams here, and I just went over the normal CE credits at the end, pretty much made the pitch of, you're already doing a ton of pre-listing inspections already. It's already part of how you guys run your business. How about we get you leads off those listing inspections that you're already doing? How would that work out for you? We're actually generating more money for you off of something that you're already doing. And she was like, I want to sign up right now. All my agents in here are going to start doing this. And we're going to set you up with the next 100 listings for this year to go ahead and do these pre-listings that they already do them on. So if there's realtors out there. What I found is a lot of the top producing teams are doing a lot of pre-listing inspections because it's just like that one particular um, team lead said, you know, she was like, look, I'm trying to limit as much liability in the game as we have now because they have a lot of blowback when, you know, something comes up within the buyer's inspection, as we all know, and they like to just deal with it up front, get the transaction done and move on. So they were all about it. Um, she's actually going to pay for us to sit down and do, so the video will come from her. So she wants to sit down and talk back and forth and create a video. She's like, I want to bring in a professional production crew. We're going to sit down and talk about this program. And that way we can pitch together to all my clients that come in. And then I will also have you do a few other um, videos with us on all the services that you guys offer. So, and it was a 30 second pitch. Um, that's all it was. It just was like, you're, I knew they're already doing it. So you can go and look and see which brokerages are doing pre-listed inspections. They'll tell you, it's pretty easy to find and go in and you talk to them. And then just say, how about you give us a shot? We'll actually do lead capturing for you. You get two months to try it out free. What are you going to lose? You get one lead out of it that you could potentially double dip on. And especially in our market, it's huge because we're such low inventory. So the second a sign goes up in somebody's yard, everyone's flocking to it. You know, people will go nuts about it. Most of these houses have offers before they even hit the market without this kind of thing. So I can't. She was really excited. And I showed Dave the text. She wrote me like right after the meeting too. Um, so it's it's something they're interested in. You know, I just ask, you know, every realtor, all the top teams are paying for lead generation services. So just know that they're already qualified when you go in to pitch this program. Okay. Um, I appreciate that very much. Um, awesome. Awesome. 
this has been a long, uh, you know, it's already been an hour, over an hour. So I think we're going to wrap it up. I don't think we're going to do, you know, tons of questions. I, if you guys have questions, you know, I guess you could private message me and, and I'll try and get those answers for you. But, you know, uh, you, some things that you could do to help Preston and I, obviously spread the good word to your inspector brothers and sisters and encourage them to get signed up with this. I mean, we can't create our own ecosystem and our own uh you know, home searching website for our industry. If we don't get more inspectors signed up, we got like around what a hundred right now. And, uh, um, you know, so we need more than that. So if, if you could all, you know, invite a couple of different inspectors that, you know, from different areas, that'd be great. And then of course, go out and get your realtor signed up in these free trials. Okay. I want to add okay. something, Dave. Uh, if you have success stories, you have some leads coming in, post that, you know, don't people, scratch out the people's name and number. I mean, we don't want that, but, uh, you know, I think it's kind of like, you know, in the, when you see other people, it work for other people. I think it's encouraging. And, uh, like I see somebody else's success, I, you know, it really kicks me in the rear. So if you have a success story, please share it on the Facebook page. Okay. That's all I got. Thanks for coming tonight, guys. I appreciate it very much. Thank you guys.